Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. My name is Christopher Penn, and this is the Basics of Regression Analysis, sort of a mini webinar, if you will. Today, we're going to be talking about correlation and how to do a basic regression analysis using social media data or the other marketing data of your choice. So before we dig in, let's talk about why correlation and regression analysis is important. Correlation is a mathematical test, a statistical test to try to determine a relationship between two or more math variables. So it could be social media shares and uh, Twitter uh, retweets. It could be uh, website traffic and clicks on your links. It could be the number of times your ads are shown uh, versus the number of times people talk about you. We want to establish whether or not two variables or more have a relationship with each other. Now, Statistics 101, correlation is not causation. Just because two variables have a relationship does not mean that they are that one causes the other. Uh, sometimes one ha causes the other, sometimes the other causes one, sometimes there's a third variable that you can't see. For example, the classic uh, statistics example is the number of deaths due to drowning goes up and down during the year, and the amount of ice cream consumed goes up and down during the year. And usually there's a very strong correlation between the two of them. We know as experienced uh, people that the reason for this is summertime. As the temperatures go up, people eat more ice cream, people go swimming more, and unfortunately some people tend to drown. Uh, but obviously eating ice cream does not cause drowning, and drowning does not cause more consumption of ice cream. There's something else at work. So uh, correlation can help suggest a relationship, but it is not proof that one variable is, is causing another. Uh, there's a terrific website, if you are ever in the mood for a good laugh, called Spurious Correlations by uh, Tyler Vegan. And you'll find Lots of examples on this site, such as um, Age of Miss America correlates with murders by steam, hot vapors, and hot objects. Uh, total revenue generated by arcades by a computer science doctorates. Again, these are all correlations that have very strong statistical trending together. But obviously, these are, are things that are not directly impacting each other, like engineering doctorates and mozzarella cheese consumption. So what do we need to do correlation analysis well? Well, there's a couple of different things we'll need. First, we're going to need some good data. Uh, in this case, we'll be using an example from my friend Jay Bear's blog. He writes a terrific blog called convinceandconvert.com with a bunch of associates, and he just published a new book called Hug Your Haters, which is terrific as well. But we need some social media data. Here I've got uh, uh, all kinds of things like inbound links and linking root domains and Reddit uh, shares. We'll also need a piece of software called social SOFA stats. SOFA stands for Statistics Open for All. You can get it at sofastatistics.com. It is completely free. I like this software package because it gives you some basic statistical capabilities, but it doesn't require you to have a stats degree and it doesn't require you to invest either a massive amount of time learning a piece of software like R or investing a whole lot of money like uh, with pieces of software like Tableau or uh, SPSS. SOFA statistics is a great starter package, and it's a step above the statistics you get in built-in spreadsheet software like uh, Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets. So make sure that you download it and install it. You may want to pause the video to go ahead and do that now. I will assume that you have gone ahead and installed the software. The first thing we need to do when we're going to do a regression analysis to, to build correlation, to measure correlation, is to build a hypothesis. And in this case, looking at this data, a hypothesis is a true or false statement about a, a limited s scope. So in this case, we have the total number of inbound links. We have the total number of social media shares here. I'm going to make a hypothesis that says that social media shares have a strong correlation with inbound links for SEO purposes. Now, obviously, I could you know, do that with any of these columns here, but that's a good way to, to start, a good way to, to develop a hypothesis. A hypothesis is a true or false statement. It's a statement that can be proven true or false. Obviously, open-ended questions like, well, how does social media sharing impact SEO is not a hypothesis. It's a question, and it's a good question, but a hypothesis is provable through your data. So make sure that you're starting with a strong hypothesis. We'll go to SOFA stats, and we're going to go ahead and import our data. And let's go ahead and choose this. JBear shares, we'll call it. Sometimes, oops, 
import. Sometimes you'll be asked what the header row is. If your spreadsheet has one, make sure you clarify that. And also sometimes you'll be asked, you know, are certain columns numeric or text because they have uh, different amounts of data in them. So like this one here is looks like it's uh, numeric until you get to, you know, things like no data. We've got our data inside of Sofa Stats. We can obviously check it out to see that the table is there. Yep, looks there. Looks like it's in good condition. So let's do a statistical test. I'm going to click on the statistics tab here. And you'll see there's a whole bunch of different stats. The two that we're interested in right now are correlation uh, Pearson's and Spearman's. The difference between these two is whether your data is normal, meaning it looks like it's a normal distribution like a bell curve, or whether it's not necessarily normal. And Spearman's is what a lot of us as social media marketers or digital marketers or marketing analytics professionals will use because let's face it, our data isn't necessarily normal. It doesn't necessarily follow a nice bell curve. In fact, it can be fairly irregular. There'll be lots of outliers, you know, certain things that just get clicked on way more than others. So a Spearman correlation is our best place to start. So we'll choose Spearman and we'll configure a test. At this point, we can we can ask ourselves, okay, what are the things that we care about? Uh, I in this particular test, I care about the total number of inbound links, and the total number of social shares. Do these change in a linear fashion together? Let's hit show results, and we've got uh, a chart here. Hmm, total links is on the bottom, total shares is on the left hand side. Now, there's a couple of things we're going to want to pay attention to here. The first is the p value. The p-value is the, the likelihood that repeating this test will give a, uh, a result that, is, um, that would be just as impactful, or just as extreme, if we were using what's called a null hypothesis. Basically, it's not the rate of error, but it is a proxy for you know, how good is our data. If the p-value is very high, like 0.5 or 1, then we probably have crummy data. If the p-value is low, like 0.01 or 0.001 or 0.00001 or less, then our data is probably pretty good. That's an important thing to look at. So um, I would recommend if you have a chance, read the mini tab blog on how to correctly interpret p-values by Jim Frost. I will put a link to that in the, uh, the, the, the sheet here on p-value. And now let's try to interpret the results of our correlation. The R statistic here is a number between minus one and plus one that indicates correlation. There's a great post over um, on dummies.com on how to interpret correlation. In the case of an exact minus one, this means that for every time uh, one variable goes down, goes down, the other one goes down in the exact same way. A uh, plus one is a perfect uphill relationship. So, and then you have different grades of relationship. Our minus uh, 0.15 fits right here between no relationship and a very weak downhill relationship. So really what we're saying is our hypothesis was that there should be a strong correlation a strong positive correlation, I should have said, between social media sharing and total number of links. And what we've proven is that there is no relationship between social media sharing and total links, at least for uh, convinceandconvert.com. Now, this is a test that you would obviously want to run on your own data. You use a social media monitoring tool to pull the number of shares for your top posts. You use an SEO tool to uh, pull the, your top posts by links. And you can see, and you can test this. Other things we could test out, maybe total social media shares isn't the right measure. What if we were just to use Twitter shares? Uh, let's hit show results. Oh, looks like the p-value went f up quite a bit. So this, this data may not even be any good. Uh, the Twitter data may be just uh, spurious. What about, say, Facebook shares? Our p-value is down more into a, a more valid territory, but again, we see very uh, uh, a minimal, if no or no, relationship really between uh, Facebook shares and total number of links. We could, what about if we choose linking root domains or actually page authority? How authoritative is the page? Let's do that by total shares. Maybe there's something in here. Our p-value has gone down much further, which indicates <clears throat> our data quality has gone up. 
And we see that there is now a moderate uh, 0.587. If we go back to this dummies post, a 0.5 is a moderate uphill positive relationship. Uh, the relationship is saying that as total shares goes up, page authority goes up, or vice versa, page authority goes up, total shares goes up. Now, what do we do with this knowledge? Well, in the case of total number of inbound links versus total shares, we see that there is no real relationship. So looking to create um, content that we share on social media expressly for the purposes of getting links probably is not a great idea because we see that there isn't really a strong relationship between what gets linked and what gets shared. When we looked at page authority and social shares, there's a stronger relationship here. There's a, there's a relationship that might be worth testing. If we create um, content that has high authority, does it get shared more? That's something we can go test. Or vice versa, if we share something, does that increase its page authority? That's, again, something we could test. And we would want to test either direction to see which causes what the causation is. And it may turn out, as with ice cream and, and drowning deaths, it may turn out there may be a third hidden variable that we can't see here. So we could we would not be able to necessarily determine that if we, through this data, but we, through testing, we could see, well, we increased our page authority shares didn't increase, or we shared thing, or things more and page authority didn't change. We, in that case, we would have evidence that there is a third uh, lurking variable hidden under the surface. So to recap, correlation suggests a relationship. It's not causation, but the lack of correlation tends to mean no relationship. We've used SOFA stats and a spreadsheet of social media data. We built our hypothesis, verified our data, loaded it to the free tool, SOFA stats. Uh, we ran a Spearman correlation because for most marketing data, Spearman is the better choice. We looked at the results, made sure that the data quality was, was okay, and then we've either proven or disproven our hypothesis. In this case, our hypothesis was disproved. There is not a strong relationship between total social media shares and the total number of inbound links a page gets. I hope you find this tutorial, tutorial valuable. I hope that you get a chance to try it on the marketing data of your choice. And I encourage you to, uh, to subscribe to the blog and follow me on social media for more stuff like this. Thanks for watching.